Hi, I'm David Shukoff, Director of Education at Manhattan Theatre Club, and welcome to this segment of MTC Education's online family drama playwriting workshop series. This series is intended for families watching together at home or for individual high school students or teachers watching alone or with friends and colleagues online. Today's topic are setting and circumstances, two critically important aspects of playwriting. So now our overall theme for this series is family drama. So when it comes to settings, what probably comes to mind are living room, kitchen, maybe bedroom. Bear in mind that there are plenty of other terrific ideas for settings for family dramas, but for the sake of simplicity, we're going to stick with the idea of the living room. And so, in fact, what I'm going to do is ask you to design a set for a living room, or more precisely, a ground plan. Now, a ground plan is a diagram of any space sort of as viewed from above. Now, remember, we're designing a stage set, not an actual living room, so you need to think about the audience's view. So, attached to this video is a PDF that shows a ground plan of a st uh, for a stage, as well as symbols for objects, furniture that is commonly found in a living room, uh, table, lamp, couch, TV, and so forth, as well as the symbols for doors and windows. So you can print that out, or maybe better, just refer to it as you create your own floor plan for a living room, ground plan, um, on a large sheet of paper. There are two things to keep in mind as you go about this task. One is mo motivated space. The other is sharing with the audience. Motivated space. What that means simply is making sure that the set will give the actors reasons to sort of move around the whole stage. So for example, if you put the couch and a lamp and the door all on one side of the stage, there's not going to be a real reason for the actors to, to use the entire space. So think about that as you're placing the furniture on your floor plan. And the, again, the idea of sharing uh, with the audience. Normally, when we're designing a floor plan or ground plan, we're thinking uh, of, of a, a room with four walls. But in the case of the stage, that fourth wall um, is in fact the portal through which the audience views the action. So that means, for example, not putting a whole lot of furniture facing away from the audience because when the actors sit in it, uh, sit in those chairs, the audience will see them. So um, sh um, now, using the instructions and the materials that we've provided on these PDFs, um, go about creating your floor plan, your ground plan for a living room set um, and for reference, we've provided two floor plans from a recent MTC productions, uh, Santa Lacuasto's set for The Perplexed and Anthony Hall's for The Height of the Storm. So if you want, you can refer to those, design your floor plan for the living room, and come on back after you've paused the video. Okay, so hope that was interesting and that you've got a nice um, floor plan now, ground plan. I use the two words interchangeably. They really mean the same thing, as you probably noticed. So what we're going to do now is um, a aware exercise, aware exercise adapted from um, a game invented by the legendary theater teacher Viola Spolin. So clear away the furniture as best you can and decide on where your fourth wall is, that is to say where the audience is going to sit. Okay, and then take the floor plan that you've created and post it someplace where everybody can see it, the audience and the actors. Um, tape it to something or whatever, but make sure it's visible. That's, that's really important. And now what I want you to do is using chairs, kind of place the, the things that people are gonna sit on, that is to say the couch, the chairs on your, it, designated in the floor plan in the appropriate spot, but only the, the chairs. Everything else for this next exercise is going to be created by miming it. That is to say, you're going to show us physically all the other objects other than the couch, the chairs, things that, that you sit on. Okay, and so set up the chairs 
and, uh, and, and the couch, putting a few chairs together, and then we'll start the exercise. Um, so, the way it works is this. The first player makes an entrance and gets involved with a, an object in the space. So, for example, maybe the first player comes on and walks over to the lamp and turns it on and then leaves. Okay, then the second player comes on, makes contact uh, with the object that the first player has shown us, in this case, the lamp, maybe turns it off or whatever, moves it, um, and then shows us another uh, object in the space, again, referring to the floor plan. And it's fine to keep looking at the floor plan. But then, so maybe the second player, after dealing with the lamp, walks over to the table and wipes it. Um, and then that player leaves the stage. And the third player comes on, shows us the lamp, the table, and then a third object and so forth. And you keep on going until all the objects on the floor plan have been shown, have you know, made contact with all of them. Again, remembering that every, everything other than the sitting things, the, the couch, the, the chairs, are to be mimed. And watch as you do this, how the setting sort of comes to life. It becomes vivid and, 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 and dramatic. Um, next, what you want to do is choose two players and decide on a re simple relationship for them. Um, husband and wife, or brother and sister, or parent and child. Don't use your real life relationships. Okay, and now give them a simple activity. Maybe they've come into the living room to eat dessert while watching television. Okay, so they go about that, and again, everything is mime, so they're eating um, their ice cream or whatever, but the idea still is to now make physical contact with all the objects in the living room, according to what's on the floor plan. So, um, but it's not a tag, a tag game with the furniture. Um, the idea is to make justified contact. Um, and indeed, it's, you know, interesting contact, inventive contact um, with the space. I mean, it's fine in these exercises to um, sit in a chair, but how much more interesting to put a piece of paper under a leg to keep it from being wobbly. So think about that as well. But in this next exercise, the one about, in my example, you eating ice cream in front of the TV set, the two players are going to make justified contact with everything in the space. So maybe the it's too bright, so the husband goes and turns off our now famous lamp. Or the volume's too low, so the wife um, picks up the remote for, and turns down the volume. So watch how the room itself becomes becomes visible and how the relationship between the characters takes on a kind of vitality and dimension as well. Okay, so now we've created a vividly imagined sta stage setting for the living room. That's great, that's necessary, but it isn't enough. Um, for a setting for an imaginary world to become dramatically interesting, there need to be it needs to be charged with to have charged circumstances. To sustain an audience interests, there needs to be a sense of trouble, um, a sense of disturbance, maybe even danger. Um, in in our last segment, if you recall, the one about dramatic openings, we saw how the inciting incident, the moment when the play really took off uh, uh, the, the, in, in David Lindsay Abair's Good People, was the scene when Margaret encountered um, her high school friend Mikey Dillon in his office, um, discovering that he was well-to-do. But that, um, that, that scene would not have really been dramatically interesting were it not for Margaret's dire circumstances, the charged circumstances in which she's living. A single parent with a high-needs child who had just lost her job. Now, Mikey, her high school friend, becomes a potential lifeline, and that then becomes the play's dramatic, uh, the, uh, that becomes the play's dramatic uh, question. So, um, the, the idea of, uh, of the dramatic question is, is charged, as I said, by the charged circumstances. So playwrights use any number of strategies to uh, create charged circumstances. One of them that we're going to explore now is the idea of the elephant in the room. 
Um, this, the idea here is that hovering over the action is a troubling issue as, uh, that the characters are aware of, but the audience is not. And it's so fraught, it's so charged, it's so exciting or troubling that the actors, the characters, don't speak of, speak of it. They don't dare speak of it. Um, they don't want to bring it up. They want, don't want to distress each other. Um, it's the elephant in the room. So let's go back to our two characters who are watching television and um, eating dessert. And let's add this, the following uh, circumstance. They have a child who's been deployed overseas to a war zone, and he or she is overdue to contact them. Now what happens as they go about this eating their dessert and making uh, contact with all the furniture uh, and all the objects in the room? What, what happens uh, to now that we've introduced this elephant in the room that they don't want to speak about again because um, they don't want to distress each other. And again, it's something that we're imagining the audience is unaware of. Okay, so what happens? What happens when the husband, for example, asks his wife for ice cream or, 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 or more ice cream or syrup or something like that? What happens? What about the computer over on the table there? Is it working? Um, is the internet working? Maybe there's a photo of this child um, that uh, attracts their attention. But it's all charged by this elephant in the room. So, um, to do the scene, pause the video, or maybe make up one of your own, and then um, come back after you've tried it out. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is watch the opening scene from Florian Zeller's the Height of the Storm, a play that was produced by Manhattan Theatre Club in the fall of 2019. The two actors in this opening scene are Jonathan Price and Amanda Drew. Let's watch and see how the scene relates to the work that we've done thus far. And then we'll come back. Here goes. What are you looking at? Did you hear that storm last night? It woke me up. Did it wake you? It's a long time since I've seen such a violent storm. It was impressive, don't you think? What is it you're looking at? Hmm? Come and sit down. It's no use just standing there, you know. You ought to come and sit down, Dad. It's no use waiting. You know, I think this has been here since I was a child. It has, hasn't it, this chair? In fact, nothing much has changed here at all. I was um, sorting through your desk, you know, and I've come across your diaries. I didn't know you were still writing. I mean, these last few months. I don't know what to do with them. What would you do if you were me? Anyway, there are so many heaps of paper to sort through. I don't know how you found your way round. I always feel compelled to tidy everything away. I can't bear mess. It upsets me. I don't know who I get that from because you and Mum are the complete opposite. Aren't you? But now all that needs organising. That's what I'm here for. No, I didn't sleep much last night. Not only because of the storm, obviously. All this has upset me. You can imagine. And there's the very fact of sleeping back in my old bedroom. I must have slept there at least, I don't know, 10 years? Maybe even longer. At one point, when the rain had eased off, I got up and I found myself here. All by myself, there wasn't a sound. And I stayed here, thinking about you. 
about everything that was said between us yesterday evening. I mean, you do understand that we have to find some solution. <laughs> Look, of course, this is a wonderful house. I don't deny it. We're all attached to it. It's just, is it still what the situation calls for? I mean, you can't live here on your own. If you want to buy a loaf of bread, you have to take the car. Look, it's just common sense, Dad. You can't live here on your own. Biscott. Sorry? I have biscott, not bread. <laughs> yes, yes, I know, same thing. Bread and biscott. The same thing. No, obviously. So? Well, what I mean is, the house is isolated. When there were two of you, it was still viable, but now it might be time to come up with something else. A different configuration, don't you think? I mean, some things you need to know when to let go, sometimes. Would you like me to get that? It's quite simple. I have biscuit, that's all, with butter and jam, strawberry jam, if you must know. Right. Don't move. I'll go. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you saw, too, how the two actors interacted, engaged with the space, and how that interaction enriched our sense of who they are, uh, the nature of their relationship, and the nature of the world we're in. Um, I hope, too, you got a sense of the elephant in the room. What do you think it was? Uh, a word of caution. In the mysterious world of the height of the storm, things are not always what they seem. Not even the elephants. Okay, now it's your turn to try. Working alone or with a partner, I'd like you to write the opening few pages of a family drama involving two related characters. Describe the setting in some detail. Decide on the character's relationship. Give them a simple activity. Setting the table, washing the dishes, doing the laundry, folding the laundry. Something to provide a topic of conversation, something for them to talk about. And most importantly, decide on the elephant in the room, the unspoken issue that will charge the circumstances. This you keep private. Okay, that you use the scene that we just saw as a model. Notice how Anne, the daughter, sort of tiptoed around the fraught subject um, without me mentioning it directly. Like Florian Zeller, I want you to try to entice the audience without giving too much information. Get them emotionally engaged and eager to figure out what's going to happen next. There's no need to complete the scene, just kind of give, bring it to a pause, the way the doorbell does in the clip we just watched. There are tips for writing uh, elephant in the room scenes in the PDFs that accompany this video, including even some suggestions for elephants. But mostly this is an invitation to your imagination. Um, and as always, we love to share out the work that you've done. So post your elephant in the room scenes to your Instagram, tagging us at MTC underscore NYC or email the scenes to us at ed at mtc-nyc.org. See you next time. Thanks. <laughs>